All right, guys, I am starting this recording and I'm super excited to see a bunch of you on on a Sunday night. I know a lot of us are moms and we're getting the kids ready for school. I'm in Jersey. Uh, my kids, this will be like week two. Some of you guys are joining us from other states. I know like Lindsay's kids started school like three weeks ago or four weeks, something like that. So nonetheless, excited to have you guys on and super excited to welcome uh, Wendy Stevenson and for her to give us her time and come here and pour into us and do some training as well as hot seating. Um, she's going to let you guys, you know, unmute and share some of your difficulties and she's going to help you guys walk through it. So I told her I was going to let her do some of the introduction of herself because she just is a powerhouse, you guys, like well beyond what she does. With her. She has a huge background in all things business. So Wendy, come on and pop in. Sounds good. We have a little feedback. So if you guys don't mind muting your lines, that would be awesome. Um, so, and then, but feel free at any point while I'm talking to unmute and talk. Um, so yes, my name is Wendy Lee Stevenson. I am in Nashville right now at my mom's house, but I actually just moved from Nashville to Chattanooga, Tennessee, but in Tennessee, but I'm from New Jersey originally, South Jersey. Um, and we'll be there this weekend, Carrie, by the way, <laughs> for like 12 hours, but I'd say for a hot <laughs> second, probably <laughs> going up for my cousin's 40th birthday. Um, so anyway, but I have been in network marketing. I'm coming up on my eight year anniversary in network marketing. And I spent my first five and a half years, um, with a skincare company and then two years now, a little over two, almost three years, um, with Modare. So, um, I walked away from a five figure a month business to start over, um, which is crazy looking back. And it was crazy at the time actually too, um, but I'm so glad I did it. And I come from a 14 year corporate background. I did sales and marketing in the corporate world, very different than network marketing. Um, and I honestly, like I was one of those people, if you ever reach out, to somebody and ask if they're open to looking at your, your products, your opportunity, and they kind of shut you down harshly. Don't write them off because I was one of those. <laughs> I shut the girl down. I was like, I have a real job is what I said. And I'm anti MLM or whatever that is. And I mean, I was so rude. I didn't think it was rude. I was like, actually kind of like, I don't know. I don't know if you'd say offended that she reached out to me, but I was just kind of like, what do you think I need? You know, I don't know. It was, but whatever. Crazy. Cause a week after she asked me that, um, and I was so rude. Um, I was at a conference with Damon John from FUBU clothing shark tank guy. And he was talking about residual income and multiple streams of income. And that's the only way to get wealthy. He says, you'll never get wealthy with a salary job. And I was like, oh, well, how do I create residual income? Or, you know, what do I add for another stream of income? My husband's like, what about that thing that Erica asked you about? And I was like, I don't know. I guess I could find out more about it. So I called her. I was like, hey, can we meet for lunch? And I'd love to learn more about your business. And she was like, what? <laughs> She's like, girl, I almost quit after the way you responded to me because she was brand new in the business. She's like, I was so embarrassed. I almost quit. Anyway, I said yes to her. I joined that night that we met. I wound up being her fastest growing team in network marketing. Her first like car, we had car achievers, first car achiever and all that stuff. So, um, and it changed my life. Network marketing absolutely changed my life. But I started um, alongside my corporate job. And my first month, I did nothing. My second month, I recruited two people. One was my sister and I bought her kit. So that doesn't really count. And then my third month, um, I recruited five people and I had a $500 or something paycheck. And I was like, oh my gosh, I made like 500 bucks doing this thing that I'm like literally just at, like, I, I had no idea what I was doing. You guys, I just started asking people, Hey, do you want to learn how to make money from home? Like, that's it. And I plugged them into a three-way call with somebody that made a lot of money in my business. That's all I did. And so, um, then a couple on, months second, while you're yeah. talking, can I stream to our team page? I'm going to stream it there sure. just in case they might want. All right, keep going. Yeah. Um, so as, uh, I, like a couple months in and I'm, and I saw a girl on stage, I went to a conference, they happened to have it in Nashville. And so I had no excuse. And I went and I saw a girl on stage, tell her story and say, she made six figures 
and surpass her full-time corporate income doing this thing on the side. And I was like, for real, right? Like when she said that, I was like, if she can do it, I can do it. So I had a moment at, at that time that I was like, I'm going to earn six figures in network marketing. Like I just made up my mind that I would. And so um, a month after that, my boss called me and said, Wendy, meet me with your phone and your computer in the morning. And I was like, for what? And he says, we can't talk about it till I see you tomorrow. And so I walked into a severance package and my company was bought out and my entire division was let go. And so I was without a job and you guys, it could have been a really scary moment for me. Um, but it was actually a relief. And I was like, you know what? Now the choice has been made for me and I'm going all in with this business. And so, um, it wasn't easy. Um, there, there were times I wanted to quit. Um, there were, there was a lot of learning that had to happen. I wasn't really a great leader and I was competitive and I, I didn't, you know, I, I had a lot to learn. I did everything the wrong way at least once. <laughs> and, but I kept going and I attached myself to the, the, top earners in my area. If I saw somebody that was crushing it, I became their friend. And I was like, what are you doing? How are you doing it? And I would just watch and I would learn from them. And so I linked arms with a lady. She made six figures a month and I just started doing everything she did. And so the stuff's not rocket science, right? But when you have a made up mind and you emulate what the top earners are doing, then you win. And if you do it with consistency. And so um, by my third year, I was a six figure and you know, earner in my business. Uh, we adopted three kids. I found out I was pregnant with my fourth when we were in Africa visiting our three, um, really deciding to adopt the three. And so I already had three kids at home. So I'm a mom of seven now. Um, they were all in my house for two years, and now only four are left in my house because three are adults. Um, and so we, so really quickly, two years ago, I found myself in a place in my business that I started that business because it was the opportunity that was presented to me. Right. And I kind of grew out of it and I felt, um, it felt really weird to be like, I'm, I should be happy if I don't work, I still make, you know, I still make a really good paycheck. I'm making six figures, whether I work or not, like, why would I not stay here? Um, but there's things that I learned, um, through the process of building a network marketing business. And one thing that I saw with our company was, um, the, that everybody can win, right. That you don't have to be a recruiter to win, that you don't have to be, I don't know. It was just, I, I was all about it. I was all about the comp plan and all about, um, just getting to a point that I could be authentically me and lean in to, to my team. And anyway, so I was scared. I was scared, scared, scared. I was like, who do I think I am that I could build another business? But guess what? You guys, less than two years, I built another six figure residual income. And it's not because I'm a genius. It's because I had a made up mind and it's honestly about two things. And I want you to write these things down. Okay. It's about consistency and it's about conversations. All right. Consistency and conversations. Actually, I'm going to throw another C in there for you. Content. <laughs> All right. Those three things. But if you are consistent and you have conversations with humans, you can grow any business that you want and you can build this as big as you want. Um, and then your content, right? So I talk about, I don't know if you guys have ever heard me. I did this with John Melton, but the three eyes. So you want to identify your ideal client. You want to interact with them. That's your conversations, right? And then you want to influence them. That's your content. So you want to influence them with your content. And so how many of you sometimes struggle with what to put on social media, right? So what you want to do is the quickest thing is figure out who do you want to talk to? And what problems are you solving, right? Who do you want to talk to? What problems are you solving? Write those things out. And that's your content, right? Outside of who you are, right? 
be be all you but if you have one thing that I was when I was at the event with Carrie sorry it's Sunday I haven't talked much today I'm like um (laughs) but when I was at the event with Carrie in uh Florida one of the things I had a lot of people coming up to me saying that knew me in person and then had just seen me online lately and then seeing me in person again they were like Wendy you need to put more of your life out there and not just always teaching people and not just always like the marketing, but we want to see your life. We want to see your kids. We want to see that reality. And they're like, that's what, you know, sets you apart is that you have all these kids and you have all this craziness going on. And so, and it's funny because I really kind of, a lot of times tried to hide that. And so, um, So you want to lean into who you are and see what does set you apart. Like, how can you show up uniquely you online? Like, what are you quirky? I realized all my photos were like of me all done up on a photo shoot, right? Like in clothes that were not mine because I don't wear that, right? Like I was all, and I'm like, (laughs) I took these pictures uh, probably two weeks ago in my closet. I took these photos in my closet with a blue screen behind me. I wasn't even really dressed up great, like whatever. And I just took these like expressive photos and I put them in um, a folder for my graphic designer. And he's been popping those on my carousels on Instagram lately. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's me. Like it's me. If you scroll back like a year and you see all the really pretty styled shoots, like that's not me. And Maybe people that didn't know me couldn't tell, but the people that knew me could tell what was really me and what wasn't right. And so what's me is I make a lot of silly faces. What's me is I don't, I like to dress up and do it up nice every once in a while, but most of the time I'm in my leggings and, you know, sports bra, like tank top or whatever. Right. And so, um, be you, if you're quirky, if you're funny, if you're, inappropriate, like whatever, show up you because you're going to attract the people to you that you actually want to do business with. If you're not showing up authentically you online in your content, you're going to attract people you don't like. Right. And so I've learned like, it's cool. It's cool. I'm not for everybody, you know, and I'm okay with that. And some people don't like me and I'm okay with that. It doesn't hurt my feelings anymore because as long as I know I'm showing up authentically me, right? Now, when I'm faking it, (laughs) if people don't like me, then it's like, "Er, what do you do, right? So be uniquely you. So show up you online, but then having that, what problems are you solving, right? What are you helping people achieve? And what do you want to be known for? So do you guys feel like you know that? Like, here's who I'm, here to serve, right? This is who I want to serve. And this is how I do it. These are the problems that I solve. Do you guys, does anyone have that like down? I feel like I would even love for like one of the girls to just pop off and just have you walk them through that because yep. I, I mean, I would love to have you just break it down for someone. Like, what do you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So if somebody's struggling with that in any way, Dana. Hi. Yeah. I, I struggle with that daily. Like I, I, I just don't know what, and I've talked about this with Carrie and other people. Like, I really, really don't know what, how much I want to put out there, what I want to put out there. Um, you know, I, I'm a divorced mom. I have two kids. Um, you know, um, my son has special needs. Um, you know, uh, there's, uh, but I'm me, like I, I'm, I like fashion and I, you know, I'm, you know, I have a, you know, I have a career. Um, this is my side hustle. So I, you know, I, I don't know how much to, uh, like put out there, put in, I think everybody struggles with that. So who, so what is your reason? Let me start here. Why did you say yes to network marketing? Uh, I want an extra stream of income, um, to help like actually offset my, um, my full-time job, which I make, I make good money in my full-time job, but this is like, kind of like maybe a save. Mm -hmm. Um, and eventually like I had just had this conversation with Carrie, like I do, I want to, 
I would love to leave my full-time job and make this my full-time job. Mm -hmm. Um, I believe in the products. I really, really believe in the system. Mm -hmm. Um, and anybody I talk to as a customer, they're like, Oh my God, like I had a customer call me today. Oh my God. Thank you so much for introducing me to this. It's great. I went to a party. Everybody wanted to know what I'm using. I'm like, send Mm -hmm. them my way. Yeah. Um, so I, I get very excited about the products. It's just, you know, I feel like sometimes my stories are a lot about that. Um, I struggle again, like with how much to put out there. Um, How real do I want to be? Like, I'm going through a lot of things personally right now. Like, do I want to put that out there? Do I want to, you know, you know, I I don't know, but I want to connect with a certain level of people that know, like that um, can uh, identify with me as well. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So let me speak to, if you're going through stuff right now, what to put out there. So I'll speak to that first. And then I'm going to back up to, to, to some of the first things she said. Um, so I don't typically talk about, like, if I'm going through a really hard time right now with something, I, I typically am not going to share it then, but when I've gotten through to the other side and the lessons I learned, then I will show up and talk about it. That makes sense. Yes, absolutely. Um, so it's not like, oh, I'm airing all the crap I'm going through and not that you would do that, but you know what I mean? It's not that, Hey, you know, I went through a really rough, rough patch and, you know, I'll be a little vulnerable and let you guys know what it was and here it was, and here's how I got through it and why I want to bring this to you. So it becomes about serving your audience, right. And helping them through something now in that same token, as you're building your business, Right. I don't want anyone to ever feel like, oh, I can't talk to people about the business um, and the success they can have if I'm not there yet. Right. So with with your problems and the trials that you're going through, that's one thing. But as far as your business, you can take people on the journey with you. Right. So you can say, hey, here's what I'm doing. Here's why I'm doing it. And I want to take you guys with me. Like who's coming with me? Who's doing this with me? Right. So I think it's uh, Russell Brunson talks about like the expert or the journeyman. So the expert is speaking to your audience saying, Hey, I've been there, done that. Here's what I learned. The journeyman is, Hey, let's go on this path together. And I'll teach you what I learn as I'm learning it. So, um, now you, all those things you said about you're, you're a single mom, you've been through divorce, you work, you support your kids, right? You have a side hustle. You have a child with special needs. How many moms out there are like you, do you think that could use an opportunity that you have? I'm sure a lot, a lot. Mm -hmm. So those things, um, are huge parts of who you are. Right. And so I would absolutely talk about all of them that you feel comfortable talking about. And that may be having something, you know, you know, where, where do you want to focus? Where do you want to? So I typically have people do like three buckets or I call them storylines. Like for me, I have faith, family, and business are my three storylines. So those are my big, broad buckets. Okay. And so then I think about all these things. If you guys, this is a really good exercise for everyone to do. Just take a piece of paper and just start brain dumping, like, who you are, what you're about, what are your values? What do you like to do for fun? What's unique about you? Like, um, what are your favorite places to be? Like, just start, like, what's important to you? Just start brain dumping all this stuff. And you can go back through and read it and go, now, what are the like things, right? What are the things I could group together into one of these buckets, right? So for me, family doesn't just mean, my kid, right. Like just, Oh, I have kids, but it's my adoption journey. It's, you know, I have a daughter with, with special needs. It's, you know, marriage. It's all of those things for me. Family is even beyond that family is my cousins and my, you know, the trials that we've gone through, you know, in upbringing or whatever. So there's like all these things I can have under family. There is even the aspirations of family, like Where, you know, why is it important to me to be in the position I'm in and be making money from home? Because I know how fast my mom raised my first two pretty much. I have two in college right now and I worked all the time. I was never with them. And now my daughter who's four doesn't understand what life's like with, I mean, if I leave for two hours, she's having a breakdown, right? Like, where are you? And so 
I can speak to that. Right. And that's why I want to offer this opportunity to the working women to go, you don't have to trade your career for your kids and vice versa. You can have both. You can be successful and be present for your kids. Right. And so figuring out like those things that you're about. Okay. And then And I would do three or four of those broad buckets and all the different things you could have underneath it, right? All the different things that can go in that bucket and then go, who do I want to help? Right. Who do I want to help? And that's when you identify your ideal client. Now, this doesn't mean you're not going to help anybody else, right? It doesn't mean if you don't fall in this category, you're out. But it's going to help you guys. The reason if you ever lack confidence in building your business, the reason is because you don't have clarity, either clarity on who you're talking to, clarity on what you're saying, clarity on what problems you solve, right? Clarity on your system of how you're going to say it, right? If you have clarity, you can have, all, you'll have all the confidence in the world, right? So if you start to feel a lack of confidence, go, what am I not clear about? Where do I need more clarity, right? If I'm not confident setting, sending this prospecting message, is it because I'm not clear on the value I'm bringing? Is it because I'm not clear on what I'm going to do if they say yes, <laughs> right? Is it like, where, where does the confidence lack? So, all right, so Dana, if you could help any person in the world with giving them this opportunity, who would that be? I feel like special needs moms need like something for themselves um, because a lot of times um, you just don't have any time for yourself. And even if you can spend, you know, 20 minutes of, you know, you're scrolling on the phone. Well, if you're scrolling on the phone for 20 minutes, why don't you make money? Mm -hmm. I feel like that is um, like, I feel like I'd be giving back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like as a mom of somebody with special needs, right? Like sometimes you feel, um, uh, Well, there's a lot of things you feel that you don't want to tell people that don't have kids with special needs because they'll think you're horrible. (laughs) It's true. Yeah. And that's like a bond that you have with special needs moms because you're like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I actually used to have this little special need moms support group that we would say, here's what I'm feeling today. Am I alone? We're like, nope, we've all felt that way before. Right. And it was like the, you're the only people I can tell this to. Um, but so there's, and, and there's that feeling like, um, sometimes I'm trying to think of words, but that your, your life is to serve this child. Right. Right. And you, and you lose your identity and maybe, I don't know if they're violent or they have, like my daughter has, she vomits all the time and, you know, and she's really hard to move and like, it's, it's freaking exhausting. Like it's exhausting. And sometimes you just want to quit, you know? And (laughs) It's so awesome to be able to have something like if you were doing that 24 seven, to be able to have something that you could be proud of and that you could build and create, you know, as a business and to take some of the pressure off. And cause what else, right. With, with bills, we have kids with special needs. There's more bills. There's, I mean, like therapies, tons yep. of everything. Yeah. There's a yeah. chair. We want to buy my daughter is $700 and you know, mm-hmm. all kinds of stuff. So, um, leaning into that, if people knew, like, look, this girl, she's, a mom, she's doing it on her own. She's making an income. She's working full time and she's still pouring in to these other moms of kids with special needs. Right. And she makes money with a second business. Like people are going to admire you and want to follow you and want to know how you're doing it all right. Without going crazy. So those are all the things. So think of the problems of the mom with a kiddo with special needs. Like what are an internal and external problems. So external problems is like extra, you need extra money to buy the things, right? Therapy costs, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. Needs new braces, whatever the things are, right? Those are external problems. And then there's the internal problems of like depression. I don't want to get out of bed this morning because I'm just really too tired. I'm, I'm exhausted. I need respite care. I need somebody to help me, you know? I um, feel like I'm all alone. 
feel like nobody understands. I can't have any friends. I don't have time for friends, right? What are all those things, those thoughts, those feelings that come through their mind, right? And so those are the things you want to start speaking about and teaching. I would lean in and teach people like, what are some tips for whatever, for whatever problem? And then you, when you know who your ideal client is, it's so easy to go find them. Are you building on Facebook or Instagram? Uh, Facebook. Okay. So I'm in a mom of kids. Moms of kids with CP Facebook group. There's like 20,000 people in there. Okay. So getting in a Facebook group, I just go to, by the way, I just go to the friend, the members area of a Facebook group. Y'all don't overthink send in friend requests. If you know your ideal clients in there, go to the Facebook group. And I can tell you how to do on the, on Instagram too, but go to the Facebook group, go to the members And then there's going to be a section that's like the admins and then the people you're friends with and the people you have things in common with is the next section of members. And every one of those will have an ad friend right next to their name. Ad friend, ad friend, ad friend, ad friend, ad 10 a day. Don't overthink it. Don't go look at their profile. Don't worry about if they're your person or not. Just ad friend. Okay. And then when they accept your friend request, So I, every morning, this is my practice, the very start of my power hour every morning is I go and on Facebook, I go to my friends in the app. I go to all friends. And then I say sort by newest friends first every single morning. So I see who's accepted my friend request since the last time I was on there. I go to their profile at that point, right? And then I send them a message. I go look at their profile. I see what I can relate to. And then I'll go back and say, hey, I just, you know, I see your mom, you know, in this moms of special needs kids group or whatever. Um, And looks like you're in Texas. How long have you been there? Like I come up with the stupidest stuff to say to people. I don't care. Right. I just want to respond to you like people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I just start now. Not everybody. Some people are like. How do I know you? I'm like, why'd you accept my friend request? Silly. <laughs> if you don't want to be friends, right? But I will unfriend people too. If I go to the profile and I'm like, eh, I probably shouldn't have sent a friend request. All she does is post cat videos. Then I'm like, peace out, unfriend, right? So they're not going to know the difference, right? Okay. So that's my process. And I just start a conversation with every single person that accepts my friend request. So I want to, I want to jump in for a minute. I know you use Dana as an example, and I just want to like chime in and just say what Wendy walked you guys through with Dana, like any of you can do, if you sit down and you write the little, um, what did you call them? Categories, like the funnels, the buckets, and like identify your people who you're talking to and do the same types of activities. Yep. Like who you're talking to, what you're going to relate about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Because if you can get in there and and speak with people that you know their pain points, right? And come up with, in those Facebook groups, come up with a post that's like um, uncovering people that may want, right? Say, maybe make a post in one of those groups that says, um, how many of you really struggle finding community, a community of friends, right? You're gonna have people going nuts in the comments. So every one of those, you have a reason to message and go, hey, I know how hard it is to find friends. I've actually found a ton of friends online and some of them have become my best friends and I've never seen their feet, right? It's amazing what can be built online. Would love to stay connected with you, right? And then you write their name down and be like, community, that's important to them, right? You could do a post a couple of weeks later Like what things do you wish you could buy for your kid right now? That's just not in the budget. Guess what? Now you can write their name down and say money, right? These are people that are going to be motivated because they need some extra funds. So you guys, for all of you, for your ideal client, think what, what groups am I in? Where can I draw out, basically have people raise their hand as my ideal client, right? Why do people join network marketing for the money, for the community and to help people, right? So 
um, figuring out who in your in your audience, you know, is is motivated by any of those things or lacking any of those things, right? So Dana, and everyone after you make this list, and you start pulling out those pain points, that's your content. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then how do you do you typically post um, like two to three times a week, you feel on your on, pain point, and then I mean, on your pain points, you have to post every day, twice a day, really. Um, but do you feel like that's how, what do you think is a good combination of? Posting? Yeah, so I do four E's. So empower, entertain, engage, and educate. So I try and mix it up in those four categories. Every, you know, so every five posts has some of that, right? Empower, so, engage, educate. Entertain. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. So like uh, for you, you could do like a funny meme about, you know, being a single mom or something could be your entertainment, um, an engagement one asking, you know, asking a question, getting people to post in the comments, um, and just make a list guys content. You can batch, right? Make a list of all, here's some engaging questions, right? Write a list of 50 of them. So anytime you're like, I don't know what to post today. Oh, here, I'll put this up. Pinterest is your best friend for entertaining posts, right? I go to Pinterest all the time. Funny mom quote or whatever. I'll just look up on Instagram or not Instagram, Pinterest. Um, yeah, so that's, so when you have your, your three buckets and then the four E's, you can make a little grid and go, look, you could create content for days that way. And I'm going to pipe in again, because I'm like, connecting what you're saying to what she started with you guys was consistency conversations and content so if you are consistently posting like dana said and you're putting those questions out those are the conversations like imagine if you have a day where you ask your entire facebook world a question people love to like and this is anything insane something that you can like have conversations with people like oh my gosh i saw that you said this like um the one thing that i loved i did one time was like what's something that you've done that nobody else in my friends list has done that like went crazy and that's so many conversations like holy crap i didn't know you did this and i didn't know you did that and like you know like and then it's it goes right into um the content yeah the content the conversations so yeah i felt like yeah. i wanted to say that <laughs> yep and that's all it is you guys i mean if you have good content you're not going to be perfect to start right but keep improving and you have good content and you have the conversations you can't do one without the other you can't like if you are having all, I mean, you could have conversations without the content, but it's going to be a lot harder, right? My content is what shows me who, like, I have 50 people comment. Those are the people that are getting my attention. That, those are the people I'm going to engage with on the back end in Messenger, right? Who's watching your stories? In my power hour, I'm going through my stories and going, who's watching? And that's who I'm going and engaging with their stuff and watching their stories and having conversations with them, right? This is your warm, these are your warm leads. So, all right. Who else wants to kind of dive in, has a question. And then how do you, you have those conversations, but how do you turn it? Like, where do you pivot into? Yep. Good question. So everyone's going to be different. Um, there is no right answer. Um, network marketing coaches and trainers will try and tell you there's a right answer, but there's not. So it, I would say the more conversations you have, the better you're going to get at leading them. Learn to be really good at asking good questions. Like become an expert question asker. Not like, how are you? Right? Good. Think of how you'd respond to that, right? So, hey, I was just thinking about you. Haven't talked to you in a little while. Curious, what fun trips do you have coming up? Or what fun vacations do you, you and your family have, have coming up? Or what was the best part of your summer? I know summer's over, kids are back in school. What was the highlight of your summer, right? Get people talking. Um, so getting people talking. And then here's, here's the deal. You can try and lead them through conversation to expose. If you know the pain points that, that your product or opportunity solves, right. And they, in conversation, you can lead them to expose that 
Does that make sense? Right? Like you're asking good questions. And so you might say, let's say you're talking to a nurse and you're like, Hey, how's it going? Like, how are you feeling with the climate right now? Like, are you like all in staying in nursing or are you, are you looking at other options? Right? Like, how are you feeling right now? And get them to talk to you. And then, hey, I don't know if this would be for you or not, but I make money online and I know the situation you're in must be tough. And if you want to see more about that, I'd love to show it to you. It may not be for you. That's totally fine. But I think it's worth taking a look at. Right. So but if you can have the conversations with people and understand where pain points could be with and you have a solution, try and lead into that. Otherwise, if someone's just fun, I talk to enough people and that's what you need to do, right? Is talk to enough people that you're not like where you need everyone to be the one, you know what I mean? When you talk to enough people, you can start to go, okay, I enjoyed this chick was a ton of fun. I'll start 20 conversations a day. Uh, right now I'm doing Instagram. I start 20 conversations a day on Instagram with people I don't know. I have typically about three or four respond to me and get in a conversation and one with a conversation that just blows up. Like we just have a great time talking and it's my new friend. Right. And so that person, I'll be like, man, I had so much fun talking to you and getting to know you. You are awesome. You're my kind of person. Listen, I don't know if you keep your income options open, but you're the kind of person I like to do business with. So if you are, let me know. I'll shoot you some info about what I would, what I do. I'd love to have you as a part of my team. If not, totally get that too. And a lot of times people say, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Is it one of, right. And they'll start asking questions. Um, most people aren't like, sure, send it over. Right. But some are, some are. Um, but if you're talking to 20 people a day and one person, <coughs> excuse me, I just got to tickle my throat. Hold on. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. That's like the worst feeling. Do you guys ever get that? <coughs> anyway, if you're talking to 20 people a day and you can ask one from that 20, you'll crush it in your business, right? <coughs> I'm going to have to get more water. I'm going to mute and cough. Okay. So my question is going to be about Instagram. So how how would you compare? Cause I prefer Instagram. So I guess I'm asking, how do you build? Cause it's very different than Facebook as far as even engagement. Like, yep. you know what I mean? Like yeah. you, you're, you're not necessarily going to throw up a meme and get a bunch of engagement on an Instagram post. So I guess I want to know. What so on Instagram, uh, you need to, uh, do you have a list of hashtags for your ideal client, what they use? Um, I need to make more, but yes, I mean, I, that's how I do it now is when I'm like doing the power hour, if I'm doing like the three, three, three or whatever, I will go hashtag find people with hashtags. Okay. So what do you, so who's your ideal client? Um, busy moms, working moms. I'm a pharmacist. So I tend to go to healthcare people, okay. nurses, pharmacists, yep. even sometimes physicians. Okay. Um, so but there's a, ways yeah. you can find people, right? So through hashtag search, um, go to the top or the recent posts and just start engaging with them. And I, I send a really stupid message, but it works. Uh, where's my phone? Hold on one second. I don't know where my phone is. <sighs> I think it's outside. Um, anyway, I send a, just a message like, Hey, it was just did a hashtag search and found you on recent posts. Love your content. Tell me how long have you been in healthcare? Right. Okay. Or what are you in healthcare? Right. So I just start a conversation. I tell them how I found them, start a conversation. So that's how I start my 20 conversations a day is through hashtag searches, or I go to where my ideal clients hanging out. So, um, do you have a favorite brand of scrubs? No, I don't really wear scrubs. <laughs> okay. Um, my, one of my nursing friends was targeting nurses on Instagram. And so she, yeah, like went to her favorite brand of scrubs and just 
started finding the people that were liking their recent posts, or if there is like somebody reputable that people will follow or, um, like, uh, if you go to one of the hashtags of your, give me a, give me an example of a hashtag that you use. Um, I can, a lot of times I can get a lot from pharmacists, mom life. Okay. And then I do go to twin moms as well. Cause I have four kids and I have a set of twins. So okay. conversations can be very, very easy with twin yeah. moms. Cause it's just a whole different level of having baby, you know, I mean, right. yeah, it, I can relate to them very easily. And especially if they're like having, if they have little babies, I can talk to them very easily about twin life, how hard it is or what's going on. And, um, you said so pharmacist, find, what mom, what was mom, it? like pharmacist, mom life or just pharmacist, mom. Okay. I don't see a lot of posts with that. There's like 8,000. So I would try and find something that has like, so when you, Pull that up, let me see, pharmacist. So you wanna have something that has between 100 and 500,000. So there's pharmacist life, um, hashtag. Sorry, I'm pulling this up on my computer really quick. Why? Okay, so okay. yeah, so pharmacist life hashtag, you can go there and there's posts and then see like, who, if somebody has a lot of inf interaction, like what other hashtags they're using, I'll go look at. Um, or I will just find an influencer that has your ideal client following them. So I did this the other day. I did like something about funny mom, hashtag funny mom or something. And I pulled up this woman who had a ton of followers and she is a sleep, uh, coach for babies or whatever. Like she helps get your babies to sleep. And so for somebody that's targeting moms, it was somebody wanting to target postpartum moms, right? Well, guess what? If you're following her, you probably have a little one, right? And so then you just go to her recent post. If it has 7,000 likes on it, you can click on that 7,000 likes and it pulls up a list of people and you can see it, who has a ring around their head and who doesn't. And the ones That's that like have a gold a ring, mine. Yeah. The ones that have a ring around their head means they have stories, means they're active on social media. So I just go react to their stories. Literally just hit the heart, hit the hand clap, hit the hundred, whatever. And I interact with stories and I don't do another thing with them until they react back. So then that you know, some people double tap and like your reaction. So then I go look at their profile, kind of like with on Facebook, right? I'm not worrying about it until they accept my friend request. So here, I don't worry about it until they interact back with me. Then I'll go look at their Instagram profile, see if there's somebody that I want to talk to, and I'll ask a good question, get in the conversation, right? Um, and then write these people down that you like, okay? I don't write everybody down, just the people I really enjoy interacting with or I think could be a really great prospect for me, I write it down and I make sure, and kind of like you said, three, 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 right? That I'm interacting with them several times throughout that week and then get into a conversation again. But yeah, Instagram, just, I call it OPP, other people's people. <laughs> just, just go interact with other people's people. No, I kind of really love that. That's like genius idea. I mean, I always knew like what you guys started talking about looking on the hashtags for the people, but like, it's so true. If you can find people that are on the hashtag that already have a pretty good influence and have a lot of people following them, anyone that's following them. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's genius. And you can do it all day long. It's super simple, right? Yeah. It takes seconds to click on somebody's story and interact. Makes sense. Right. Does that help? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, it did. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And I liked your tip too, you guys, about if you're going to interact with someone, find someone that's so active on social media and they have a story up because clearly they know how to like do stuff, you know? And also on Instagram, like about posting, right? So you want to be in your, your stories are for the people that are already following you. You're not going to find new followers with stories, but your stories are imperative if you're doing that work because they're going to come back and look at your stories, right? 
Um, so paying attention to your stories. I mean, right now reels is where it's at. Like that gets you the exposure. Um, if you're wanting to build on Instagram and you're not doing reels, I would say you have a new job start tomorrow reels every day. Um, I'm doing reels and carousels. I've grown my Instagram following like 200 people in the last couple of weeks. Um, just by, and I'm not doing reels every day, but I'm just trying to, um, I'm doing that more intentional interaction, um, finding people with hashtags and then, uh, doing reels and carousels and I repurpose other people's stuff. So I use, um, like one of my most popular posts was not mine. And I use the repost app. Um, and this chick, Rachel Bodie, I, and I mean, my engagement skyrocketed because of her post that I reposted and gave her credit right in the comments on my page, um, shared it to my stories. I think it was shared like 80 something times from my grid. So some of my best posts are other people's. <laughs> I actually shared that Rachel. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. I the love Netflix that. One. But by the way, you are hysterical. I love following you on Instagram. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. I'm, I'm a hot mess over there. I'm like, I'm not talking about this stuff anymore. Just kidding. Next day. I'm like, I'm back. I'm talking about it. Again. <laughs> Either love me or hate me. I don't care. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm trying to get more intentional on Instagram. I've Facebook has been my, my jam forever. Um, but I feel like well, I feel like reels, right. Just like TikTok, that short form video is where is right now. What's going to get you the most exposure while well, reels is coming to Facebook. Some of my friends in Canada already have it. So, um, so for Facebook land, don't be upset. Right. And think, oh, if just go to Instagram for reels, because, um, reels are coming to Facebook. Do you have I, it on your Facebook? Not yet. I think do I do. I think I posted a few of them. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Some of my friends do. I haven't seen it yet. Um, but yeah, but I feel like we've had you on here all this time. I don't want to hold you up all night either. So no, I'm fine. I feel like we just started, but <laughs> <laughs> it is flying by. Let's do one more, like kind of whoever has questions about whatever. It can be anything. Where are you stuck in your business right now? Where do you feel stuck? We'll dig into one more and then I have a little offer for you guys. Okay, if nobody else is going to ask, organization, how do you stay organized? Okay. Like in a quick, I know it, I know you're not going to go into, you know, huge detail, but yeah, I mean, that's one of probably my, like, as far as consistency with like keeping track of, like you said, writing people down that you want to make sure that you're keeping up with, or I don't know, I just, I feel like I fall apart with organization. Yeah. So I do a couple things. Um, I have created my, what I would call my rhythms or my flows, right? So I know what my power hour looks like, right? And then I use a bullet journal. I used to use all the tools, all the tracking tools, blah, blah. It was a waste of my freaking time, right? By the time I get people loaded in there, it was just a waste of my time. Um, <clears throat> I only write down a name if I really want, if I really like the person. Okay. The only other time I track people is if they've expressed interest in my products or my opportunity. If I decided that they're one day joining me, because that's what I say, because I want them on my team. Right. Um, or I've ATM them. Right. So if I've ATM would them, then they're, that's easy to find. So check regularly if you're using an ATM group, who you've added to that group, keep track of those people. But I don't, I don't keep track of everyone I talk to. I would never do that. Right. Cause I'm talking to way too many people. Um, so I will also go back through. So for you on Instagram, if you're starting a whole bunch of conversations on Instagram, when you go back to your DMS, and I do this as part of my daily routine too, I go through my DMS. I just scroll down. And then I scroll down like a couple pages and then I look at who has rings around their names 
And I just go start interacting because these are people that I've already, because on Instagram, every, and Facebook, right? Every single person that I'm connecting with, I'm in their DMs. If they accept my friend request, I'm in their DMs the next day. If they are interacting with me on Instagram, they're in my DMs. So my messenger folder has everybody, right? So then, like I said, it's just going back through your messenger. And that's the, that I don't, I, like I said, I used to do all the tracking stuff and it was a waste of my time. And I get so caught up in that. Um, so I just scroll through the DMS. I use an app, a Google Chrome extension. It's not free. I can share the link with you guys. Um, that is for messenger for Facebook messenger. So like, um, I did, I do birthday messages once a week. And I say, I know I'm early, you know, but I see your birthday's coming up. Blah, blah, blah. So I do it once a week. So, and it's typically on the weekend because it's mindless and people are on their phones on the weekend. So I like tonight, one of my activities tonight is to go through and everyone that I, I'm just type, I type birthday back in my messenger on my computer and it's going to pull up everyone I sent a birthday message to, because I actually say that in the message. And then I have this um, Google Chrome extension for Messenger that's my funnels. And I'll just say birthday, 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 birthday. And I'll label them all as birthday. Okay. And so now everyone I've sent a birthday message to, I can have in a funnel and I can literally with a couple clicks, um, send them all a message if I want to individually. Um, so I have... I have one that's called nurture. I have a funnel that I call nurture, meaning I just want to get to know these people. I've had a conversation. And so my nurture message is, hey, just thinking about you, how was your week? Right, that might be one of the messages I send. I might have 50 people labeled for nurture. And in an hour, my computer will one at a time send a message to them. So I'm doing, I'm doing other stuff. I'm creating my content and it's over here sending my messages. So um, that's what I use for Facebook. For Instagram, I just scroll and then I use stories like crazy. That's how I get in and follow up. But like I said, if I really like them, they go in my bullet journal. <clears throat> and I'm doing a bullet journal masterclass tomorrow night for anyone that's interested. But um, I am not organized at all. And I have an electronic calendar, but I move that electronic calendar to every week. I lay out my bullet journal for the week and um, that. And, and so every day I write down the names of the people that I really want to connect with that I that I want. Right. And then I do have a master list in the back of my bullet journal for people that have like reached out to me about business that I know in, in my follow up time I need to go to. And then those people after the week right? I keep seeing their name. I'm interacting with them the next week. I don't move them over unless I really want to. Right. So I, when you guys take that perspective of like, I'm weeding through the people and I'm deciding who I want, right. Instead of like the mindset that most network marketers have is who can I get? I got to get them all. Who am I going to get? Right. Um, and you're talking to enough people. What I'm teaching you as far as the method of tracking is not gonna work if you're not talking to enough people, right? If you're not talking to enough people, you gotta follow up like 13 times to get somebody to say yes. But if you're talking to enough people and you're putting out good content and you're engaging with other people, then they're gonna come back and see your stuff. And I have people reach out to me every week, right? Asking me about my business or me about my products, right? So, but that again is content conversations, consistency. Yeah. Um, so I have, um, there's so much, right. There's so much I could talk about and train on and there's so many different things. Um, but I've built two six figure network marketing businesses, one six figure coaching business in the last eight years. And, um, I have spent myself probably $60,000, $70,000 on training, on coaching and training and courses. And I've read 
probably one year in my network marketing career, I read a book a week. And I, I actually did that for a whole year. I read 52 books in a year. Um, I don't recommend it actually, but <laughs> um, I've read a ton of books. I'm always listening to audiobooks, always podcasts. Like I constantly am learning and sorting through all the things I learn to see what best I can bring, you know, to others. And I do have a Facebook group. If you guys aren't in there, Credo Collective, I think I'm the only Credo Collective Facebook group that there is. Um, and I do training in there every once in a while. Uh, I will be pretty consistent in the upcoming weeks in there, um, and have guest trainers come in and stuff sometimes too, but that's my community on Facebook. And, um, I just launched a course, um, that I'm really excited about. And my goal with this course is to make it super affordable, like the price of a business kit. So if you could start a business, you can start this course. Um, and it's called Foundations of a Six-Figure Mompreneur. And I have actually six modules in there. I started with five, but I have a bonus module at the end that I felt like needed to be in there. But um, And it is all about everything you need to build a six-figure business. So the first part, it's all about your time, right? How, how do you, that's what I, the question I get all the time. How do you do it all, Wendy? Right? That's probably what they ask you, Dana. How do you do it all? So I talk about how to handle your time, how to value your time, what to spend your time on, how to time block, how to get it all in and not be stressed out. Like I'm rarely ever overwhelmed. And that's because of the way that I have trained myself to handle my time. Um, the second part is all about goals. So how to really take a goal. How many of you guys set a goal in the beginning of the year and at the end of the year, you're like, oh, did I hit that or not? Right. Or even at the beginning of the month, I'm going to hit this this month. And then you don't do anything throughout the month to actually track if you're on, if you're going to hit it. And, you know, month end, you're like, oh, maybe next month I'm, I'm five grand off. I'm maybe next month. Right. So, uh, my second module in there is all about the right way to goal set. Um, and we call it goal setting to the now. And there's something I teach called a GPS, but basically where you take that a big goal that you have, and we break it down to, you know, what to do every day to get to that goal in that time frame, Right. And you know how to adjust if you're not reaching the milestones you need to hit. So then the third part's all about the third module is all about, um, basically attraction marketing and how to brand yourself. And a little bit like we talked about with the pillars or the buckets, um, the, and, and to really get to the point, um, well, that you're comfortable, that you're comfortable showing up online, that you're creating that brand. Right. And then the third, the fourth module, sorry, is, um, basically helping you prospect, right. And getting your rock star people to come find you. Um, and then the, the last module before the bonus module is how to duplicate and automate. So how to duplicate in your downline, I call it clone yourself, right? So like, wouldn't it be great if there are like five of you, I could get all the things done. Um, but how to duplicate, how to automate. So everything, every process I use from project broadcast to Facebook groups, to that messenger app, I was telling you about all the processes I use to make things simple. Um, cause I am the person that if I have to do things repeatedly, right, it either needs to be automated or outsourced. So like my next thing that's outsourced because I've just started really doing it. And I'm like, yeah, this is a waste of my time is the birthday messages, right? Like I can pay someone to do that. And then I tell you all my apps and fun tricks that I have to make things easier. So you're not typing things out all the time and whatever, and take the the mental stuckness away from prospecting, right? If you have scripts ready that can go with a push of a button and you're not overthinking it, how many overthinkers, right? Um, so anyway, so that's the, my course that I created. I am so excited about it. I'm telling you, it gives you everything and it actually maps out how to make six figures in your business. So I give you everything you need to build a six-figure business if that's what you want to do. The last bonus module is how to handle the money 
as it comes in. Because that's what I did very wrong for a long time because nobody taught me, right? I accidentally became an entrepreneur and I didn't understand taxes and write-offs and all that stuff. And it's not like tax advice, but I'm going to teach you guys in that last module how I handle my money that comes in, um, where it goes and what that looks like. So you can do that from the beginning, right? If you can get your money right in the beginning, then it makes for a lot less stress later. Um, but anyway, if you guys are interested in that course, let me know. Um, it's 397 and then there's a three payment plan option too. So like I said, the price of a business kit and you have lifetime access to it. And the tools and stuff will be updated as new tools come out. And I use new tools. Um, and it's mindset, skill set, and tools. I do a lot on mindset because that is the stuff we want to write off. Like, no, just tell me what to do. Well, guess what? You're not going to do it if you don't have the right mindset. You can be told all day, right? So I talk a lot about how to, um, and how to trick your brain into mode, right? Because self-motivation is kind of crap, right? Like you, we got to, there's different ways to trick your brain to make you do the work. And so I, I talk a lot about that too. But if you guys are interested in that course, and you get enrolled in the next two days, then I am going to give you a month long coaching with me on Boxer. So you have full access to me for a whole month on Boxer to ask whatever question your heart desires. So. Oh my gosh, you're awesome. And for those of you that don't know what Boxer is, it's really cool. It's like this app where you can, it's like the old school Nextel phones where it's like, boop, boop, and you can like send like a quick little message. So. I love it because you can have like conversations more than messenger. It doesn't cut you off at a minute. I, I bought premium so I can speed you up four times. So you're like, right. <laughs> That's how I listen to my podcasts and everything. Oh yeah. So. I, I speed all the podcasts up. Yeah. Cause then you could just consume double the amount, double yeah. the things, you know, but well, this was awesome. Um, I feel like, I, I don't know if anybody has any last minute questions. Thank you so much. Um, we appreciate you got you hopping on and spending your time with us. Yes, no. um, awesome. I just want to, where do you sign up for the course? I can drop the link. Um, do you want me to drop it in this chat or do you want me to send it to Carrie? Can you guys click on the chat if she puts it in there? I mean, you could do that and then you can send it to me and I can send it to them as well. All right. Hold on. I don't have my phone in front of me, which is where all my stuff is stored. <laughs> I can't believe you don't have, your phone is outside. I think it's outside. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> um, hold on. Sorry, guys. If you go to Wendy Lee online, let me just do that. Wendy Lee online. Hold on. All courses. Here we go. All right. Dropping it in the chat now. And it, you can see the breakdown in there. I feel like I've been like really struggling getting my words out tonight. Sorry, guys. Not on my A game tonight, but it'll say, here's what you learn. And it shows you all the modules and stuff like that. So if you guys have any questions, just reach out to me. I'm on Facebook, Wendy Lee Stevenson. Thank you so, so much. Seriously, this was like great. I took all your notes and you guys, I'm going to, um, if you have anybody that you want to share this with, I'm going to upload it to the YouTube channel title it out and stuff and then it'll be there for the replay if you guys have to re-listen or anything all right y'all have a good one thank you bye y'all bye